lives are made up of the events that happen to us. And this can be a great source of inspiration for your next orchestral piece. One idea is to write about an event that has actually happened to you, say an event to do with some travel or moving cities or even an event like surfing on a hot day or riding your bike through the park on a rainy autumn day with the wind in your hair. These three examples might not seem like obvious choices for crafting a winning orchestral piece, but these kinds of events have been the source of inspiration for countless compositions, believe it or not. So the idea of traveling or being on the move has been an incredible source of inspiration for many composers over the years. So let's have a look at some examples from composers who have been inspired by the idea of embarking on a journey, moving, traveling, or coming home. Short Ride in a Fast Machine by John Adams is one such example. The steady beat and the pulsing of the clarinets and the synthesizers pushes the listener forward on a journey from the word go. The orchestration is ever-changing like the scenery that you're passing. Pacific 231 by Arthur Honegger. Um, Arthur Honegger has said, and I quote, I have always loved locomotives passionately. For me, they are living creatures and I love them as others love women or horses. All right, Arthur, steady on. But nonetheless, the most famous railway related piece was the result of Honegger's train obsession and that is specific 231. In 1949, Gene Mitry's award-winning film Pacific 231, which was a tribute to the steam locomotive, used Arthur's work as its soundtrack. Speed by our very own Aussie composer Matthew Heinsohn is an orchestral piece about, well, speed. You can watch a video at the bottom of this lesson which briefly interviews Matthew Heinsohn about his work and you can also listen to the entire piece there. Matthew Heinsohn also wrote another orchestral piece called RPM. Now RPM obviously stands for revolutions per minute. So this piece seeks to capture the feeling of, uh, of speed, acceleration and momentum. The composer was also influenced by heavy metal music when he was writing this piece and describes the overall effect as something similar to that of driving a car at a very high speed. Percy Granger wrote a piece called A Rival Platform Hamlet. Now Percy Granger also adored traveling by train and during his long journeys he loved to spread his manuscripts out and compose. In his own words, A Rival Platform Hamlet or well, hamlet is just a word for a little ditty to hum, it derived from, and I quote, awaiting the arrival of a belated train bringing one's sweetheart from foreign parts. What great fun, the sort of thing one hums to oneself as an accompaniment to one's tramping feet as one happily, excitedly paces up and down the arrival platform, unquote. So his famous composition uh, was said to have actually been composed at London's Liverpool Street and Victoria stations in 1908. So these are all famous examples of compositions about moving or transportation or, or a journey. So it's a great source of inspiration for your next composition. Now, writing an orchestral piece about surfing on a hot day might not seem a terribly inspired place to start a composition. And neither is the possibility of riding your bike through a park, but let's have a look at surfing as an idea for, an, in, uh, for a minute. Composer Joseph Waters was commissioned by Orchestra Nova to write a piece of music called Surf. The composer takes the listener on a wide 
wild rides starting at the bottom of the ocean, rising up to feel the exhilaration of surfing high atop the ocean's waves, enjoying a brief calm moment and then encountering another big wave and experiencing the turbulence of the washing machine. So, you know, the surf can be a, an incredible source of inspiration for a composition. Um, and in fact, loads of orchestral compositions have been written about and inspired by the ocean. Take Debussy's La Mer or Mendelssohn's Calm Sea and Prosperous Voyage or Ocean Rides by Sibelius. But we'll talk more about compositions that are directly inspired by nature a little later on in this lesson. But for now, don't dismiss an everyday event like surfing as a trivial idea for a composition. It's clearly worked for Joseph Waters. Now, your piece doesn't necessarily have to be inspired by travel or surfing. It could be about any fun everyday event. Skiing, a barbecue, that time you were chased by a magpie. We've already established that moving cities or surfing on a hot day could be a great idea for a composition. But riding your bike... I can hear you thinking as if I'd write an orchestral piece that was inspired about riding my bike. How utterly ridiculous. Surely that can't be a winner. But you know what? There actually have been plenty of compositions written about the humble bicycle. Apparently many of um, Edward Elgar's famous tunes came to him when he was riding Mr Phoebus, the name that he gave to his beloved bicycle. Mauricio Cagle's 1996 piece Ein Le Brise requires 111 cyclists to perform on the open road. The cyclists whistle, ding their bells and generally make whatever strange sounds they are directed to by the, the roadside score. It's a pretty cool idea. On June 2014, the Cool Quartet used their violin bows to play four different bikes. Yep, you heard me right. The composition was literally performed by Boeing bicycles. San Francisco-born composer Richard Lehmann gets his musicians to strike the bicycle spokes with metal or wood for his 1982 composition called Travelon Gamelon. And you can watch the videos to both these compositions at the bottom of the lesson. People also always enjoy a good laugh. So writing about something hilarious like that time you were chased through the park by a magpie could actually potentially be a real winner. Or perhaps you could write a piece that pokes fun at music itself. Mozart, the classical music legend, did just this. Mozart wrote a piece called A Musical Joke. It was a piece written intentionally to be as bad as possible. Mozart disobeyed many harmonic rules of the time, creating annoying repetitive patterns and even intentionally writing parts that would sound like the musicians were playing wrong notes. It may seem fairly tame to our modern ears, but at the time, this would have been quite funny in the world of serious classical music. Haydn, another classical era composer, was also known as a musical joker. A great number of his string quartets and symphonies contain phrases that poke fun of musical conventions of the time, particularly in his minuets. We've already looked at Aussie composer Matthew Heinsohn, but in 2002, he wrote a piece called Barockery. It's kind of a mockery of the Baroque style of composition. Baroque music, or music that was written between 1600 and 1720, was categorised by instruments like the harpsichord and lots of trills and frills and complex musical counterpoint. Counterpoint is basically just lots of melodies being played at once, intertwining with each other. So Matthew Heinzen, he also tried to incorporate elements of rock music into this mishmash of genres, and what results is his barockery. French composer Eric Satie wrote a piece called Three Pieces in the Shape of a Pear. Not a particularly, uh, you know, inspired place to start, you might think, but clearly it worked for 
Eric Satie. Another famous example of an orchestral piece that aims to be humorous is Leroy Anderson's The Typewriter, which is literally a concerto for a typewriter. Bieber wrote a piece called, <laughs> and that's not Justin Bieber, obviously, that's Heinrich Ignaz von Bieber from the Baroque period. He wrote a piece called Batalia, which again pokes fun at the seriousness of music itself. The piece depicts life in an army camp and uses lots of weird musical effects to paint the musical picture just as he wanted it. For instance, the section called Die, Die Liebe Lich Gessenschaft von Allerlei Humor has the orchestra playing in eight different keys simultaneously to depict drunkenness, while the section called Mars asks the double bass player to stick a piece of paper underneath the strings to create a rasping sound. It's an entertaining listen, and what Bieber's own audience would have made of it at the time is anyone's guess. I've actually written a few humorous compositions of my own. One controversial piece I wrote was called Never, Odd or Even. It was based around the concept of symmetry and obsessive compulsive disorder, which, although never been diagnosed, I believe I do show traits of. If you read the title backwards, and I mean literally backwards, starting from the N at the very end and working your way back to the N at the very start, you actually spell out the exact same word. It's a palindrome. And the score asks performers to make repetitive bodily movements such as tapping their noses or scratching their heads and the composition becomes a humorous take on the obsessive compulsive condition. It receives some fairly controversial reviews but hey, all publicity is good publicity. You can take a listen to this composition and all the other compositions that I've mentioned here um, below the lesson video. Thousands of compositions have also been written about the big life events that happen to us and the people around us. Birthdays, graduations, engagements, weddings and other big life events. These are a great source of inspiration for your next orchestral piece. So let's start with weddings. It's a great source of inspiration for many, many composers over the years. Saint-Song wrote a composition called Wedding Cake for piano and strings, which was inspired by this big life event. Australian pianist and composer Philip Johnston also wrote a piano solo called Overture No. 1. It was written for a friend's wedding. You can take a listen to the excerpt below. From about the 44 second mark, you can hear the wedding bells. Just as a quick side note, I learned today that Philip Johnston stopped composing and performing about 20 years ago. I saw him perform a piano recital when I was about 11 years old. He performed this overture at the recital and described it to us as the piece that he had written for his friend's wedding. I was absolutely mesmerised by this piece and it actually was one of the first pieces that inspired me to become a composer. Apparently, Philip Johnson has recently started performing and composing again after his long hiatus, so I'm really excited to hear what he gets up to. Now, heaps of famous compositions have also been written about other big life events, funerals being one of these. So Chopin's Funeral March is an example of a composition that was inspired by the death of a loved one. Sir Edward Elgar's Pomp and Circumstance marches are another example of music being written for big life events. The best known of the six marches is Pomp and Circumstance March Number no. 1 in D. The trio section contains the tune known as Land of Hope and Glory. In 1902, the tune was reused in a modified form for Land of Hope and Glory. Um, a section of the coronation ode for King Edward VII. The words were further modified to fit the original tune and the result has since become a fixture at the last night of the proms. Also, almost every concert in big British cities that feature the pomp and circumstance composition, the audience will start to wave British flags and sing along whenever this trio section begins. 
So, you know, it's this piece by Elgar has become known as a celebratory, um, almost an anthem for, um, for big British events. Many composers have been inspired to write famous pieces based on the events of birthdays. Handel composed a cantata for the 48th birthday of Queen Anne in February 1713. Wagner wrote his Siegfried Idel shortly after the birth of his only son, Siegfried. Now, Siegfried, the son, was named after the hero of the opera that Wagner was working on at the time. This piece was a surprise birthday come Christmas present for his wife, Cosima. She woke up on Christmas morning in 1870, the day after her 33rd birthday, to hear its opening notes performed by a small ensemble on the staircase of their villa in Switzerland. Writing about events that involve your friends has also been tried and tested in composition. You can write about events that happen to other people in so many different ways. Do you approve of the event? Do you wish it was happening to you? Or is the event a metaphor for something else? Lots of classical composers dedicated pieces of music to kings, powerful aristocracy, wealthy patrons and the like. But every now and then, a composer takes the time to pen a work of personal thanks to a friend or a teacher they admired or are inspired to write a composition about a friend. Russian composer Rachmaninoff fell into a deep depression after the embarrassing premiere of his first symphony. He stopped composing altogether, losing faith in his creativity. Rachmaninoff reached out to a doctor who was a lover of music and a musician himself. This doctor was called Nikolai Dahl. Dahl worked closely with Rachmaninoff and reignited his passion for composition. The result was actually Rachmaninoff's famous, famous second piano concerto, which he unashamedly dedicated to Dr. Dahl. The hit song, All By Myself, which was sung by many famous artists, including Celine Dion and Shirley Bassey, and even featured in the film Bridget Jones's Diary, borrows the tune from Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. The band Muse also use Rachmaninoff's tune in their song Space Dementia. So I guess we have Dr. Dahl to thank for this. When a composer decides to dedicate a work to someone they don't know personally, they usually seek out permission first, but not for Ralph Vaughan Williams. He was very fond of the legendary Finnish composer, Jean Sibelius. The dedication on, Williams, on Vaughan Williams' Fifth Symphony reads, and I quote, dedicated without permission to Jean Sibelius, unquote. When Sibelius eventually learned of this dedication, the feeling of gratitude luckily was reciprocated as he wrote that, and I quote, the dedication made me feel proud and grateful, unquote. Now you could also write about an event in history. Many great compositions have been inspired by historical events such as war, a political event, a sporting event, or a natural disaster. Beethoven's Symphony No. 3, nicknamed the Eroic Symphony, charted the rise and eventual fall of Napoleon Bonaparte. K.A. Hartman wrote his Piano Sonata No. 2. The work was written after the composer witnessed a marching column of concentration camp inmates being led to their inevitable deaths during the last days of the war. Janacek wrote a piano sonata nicknamed From the Street which was written by the composer after he witnessed an anti-Austrian protest in his hometown during which a worker was killed. Penderecki wrote the piece Trinity for the Victims of Hiroshima. So this really requires no explanation, but it's an absolutely terrifying listen. Both Prokofiev and Shostakovich composed various symphonies and other works, either commemorating historical events or... Writing about significant events like Shostakovich's 10th Symphony, which was written following the death of Stalin. Richard Strauss wrote uh, an orchestral piece called Metamorphosen. It was written after World War II, some say as a response by the composer after seeing the great Munich Opera House in ruins. But it's also been claimed that it's a much wider and more general response to the destruction and futility of war. 
And many composers have also been inspired to write about an event in the future. It could be um, a real future event, like an upcoming election, or it could be a, a fictitious future event. You might write about your upcoming trip that you've got plans to South America, or an event you might like to happen to you, such as the day you finally buy your Mustang, or it could be a fictional future event, like the day Australia moved to the North Pole, for example. So events, whether they're historical or an event that involves your friends, a big life event, or just a regular everyday event like surfing, these can all be a great source of inspiration to start your next orchestral piece. 